Good morning, everyone. I am Brother John. I am from Apostolic Pentecostal Lighthouse to the World. You can catch me on YouTube at Apostolic Pentecostal Lighthouse to the World. I believe Acts 2.38 is the salvation plan. I do believe in Jesus' name, baptism, and the filling of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get right into my Bible study. If anybody has any prayer requests, please let me know. I'll gladly get to you after I'm done with my Bible study. Um, I titled this one, Sick Unto Death. And this is from uh, John, starting out chapter 1. It's dealing with the story of Lazarus. Uh, I'm reading this from the New King James. Now, there was a certain man sick, uh, uh, Lazarus of Bethany, in the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed Jesus. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with the fragment oil and wiped his feet with her hair. I'm going to talk about that too. Whose brother Lazarus was sick. And therefore, the this, this sisters went to him saying, Lord, behold, he whom who, who you love is sick. So they send in the prayer request, God, hey, the one that you love, he is sick. And Jesus heard it. And he said, the sickness is not unto death, but it's for the glory of God, that the Son of Man might be glorified through it. And so the sickness, the cancer, whatever it is, is not unto death. It's so that God gets the glory, not the doctors, not the medication, so that God gets the glory. It's not unto death. You're going to recover. You're gonna, he's going to heal you. Because <clears throat> he said, <clears throat> the sickness is his. He's taken that on Calvary. He said in uh, Matthew chapter 8, verses 17, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Every sickness, cancer, no matter what it is, he bore it. So it's not unto death. This is not a spiritual death. And you see, the Bible also says he waited two days. Two days before he went. For Lazarus, let's see, because he said so that God gets the glory. Not man, you know, when it seems that there's no hope. All God, you know, he gets the glory. And, G and, and Jesus answers, that, are, there, are there not 12 hours in a day? When anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because, because he, he sees the light of this world. Thank you for the lights. But if anyone walks at night, he stumbles because there's no light in him. You know, if you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is like this. He, he's like the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, 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 the headlight on your car so you can see the uncommon traffic. You know, he lets you see the uncommon traffic so... You know, so you can avoid the uncommon traffic. You know, but see, if, you, if you're driving without the headlights on, you're going to get into a collision. So the Holy Ghost, it, it, it helps you see the obstacles far, uh, far ahead. So you do not fall, you do not stumble. It, it, it lets you see the obstacles ahead of time. See, blessed are the people who know the joyful sound was the joyful sound, the joyful sound of the Lord, and they walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. We walk, we walk in the light of the countenance of God. Matter of fact, we live in the countenance of God. We live in the presence of God. Jesus spoke to them, saying again, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness. He who walks with me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So, and he said right here, I have come as a light into the world that whoever, whoever abides in, whoever believes in me shall not abide in darkness. So we, if we got the light of God, the light of Christ, the Holy Ghost, we do not abide in darkness. Yes, the world is full of darkness, but we, it does not abide in us. It does not live in us. And these things he said... After that, he said, our friend Lazarus sleeps that I may go wake him up. Here's the thing. God is waking up some Lazaruses. He's waking up a lot of people. You know, he's giving a sounding alarm. He's waking up everyone. Because 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, he says right here, For the Lord himself will descend with the shout, that's the alarm, with the voice of the archangel, that's the alarm. The trump of God, that is the alarm. The dead in Christ shall rise first. All those that are dead, spiritually dead, physically dead, 
They're rising up out of the graves. You see that now. And you see, those who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus shall, and thus shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. He said, now he said, comfort one another with these words. You know, we're going to be with the Lord. He's waking people up. The bride is waking people up. The church is waking up. Thank you. And when this disciple said, Lord, he sleeps, he's doing well. They thought he's probably taking a nap. And Jesus spoke of his death. But they, but they thought he was speaking about taking a rest. And Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. He did not sugarcoat nothing. Lazarus is dead. And he said, I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there. And that you may believe, nevertheless, let us go and see. He said, I was glad that I did not heal him right then and there. I was glad that I, I, I did not meet the prayer request right then and there. So it's so also that the disciples also believe. You know, if he would have healed him right then and there, they might have would have believed it, uh, give him a five-minute thanks and went on about their business. If he would have healed it right then and there, you know, they would have soon forgot about it. But you see, God works not on our time. He answers prayer on his time. Now, Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went to meet him. Now, Martha, here's Martha. Martha was the worker, remember. Faith without, faith without works is dead. And Mary was sitting in the house. The worshiper was sitting in the house. Now, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would have not died. So now she's getting in Jesus' face. Blaming him, if you would have been there, if you would have met the prayer request when I sent it, my brother would have not been died. He would not have died. How, how many of us blame God for our situation and for the, the backsliding of our lost loved ones and for this, you know, if you would have been there, if you would have met the prayer request when I, when I gave you the prayer request, my brother would have not been died. He would not have died. But he said, but now... But even now, I know that whatsoever you ask of God, God will give it to you. And she said, hey, whatever you ask. Is the Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Whatever you ask of God, and he will give it to you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha's thinking in the future, yes, in the resurrection day, he's going to rise again. You know, but she's not thinking about the right now. She can't believe him for the right now. You know, that he can resurrect it now. That he can get off that dead bed now. And get him off that dead bed now. So now, Martha said, yes, I know he will rise again in the resurrection day. In the future. When you're going to blow the trumpet. When the dead in Christ is going to rise first. I, I believe that. But for the right now, you know, for the right now, she's having a hard time believing him for the right now. Because the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. And... And it said right here. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. I am the right now. And the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And so if you believe, yes. The Bible says, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Yes, you've got to believe. I'm not knocking that. But he said, if you believe on me, as the scripture said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water, which is the Holy Ghost. Yes, you need the Holy Ghost. But he said, if you believe on me, you shall not die. Though you may die a physical death, you're not going to die a spiritual death. And he said to him, and said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that art the Christ. You are the son of God who come into this world. Where she got it from? She must have heard Peter with it. Because you see, because he said, and, um, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father, which is in heaven. You see, see, you see, he said, God revealed it to her. God revealed to Martha. Who Jesus is. So she got a revelation of who Jesus is. 
So, when she had said these things, she went her way and called Mary, her sister, saying, the teacher has come and he's calling you. So, Mary was the worshiper. Mary was the one that Worship God. He said, the teacher is coming, is calling for you. Jesus is calling for you. And so as soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Hey, Jesus is calling me. I I'm dropping everything I'm doing and I'm calling and I'm coming. And now Jesus had not yet come to the place. And Jesus had not yet come to the place where Martha met him. And the Jews who were with her in the house they comfort us in the comforting her. And they said that Mary rose up quickly and went out and followed her, saying she's going to the tomb to weep there. She's going to the tomb to weep for her lost loved ones. How many people are still weeping over their lost loved ones and praying and supplication over their lost loved ones? And see, now here's Mary's attitude. When Mary came where Jesus was, she saw him fell down at his feet, saying, Lord, if you had been there, my brother would not have died. See, Mary said the same thing Martha said, but her attitude was completely different. She was humble. She went to his feet and said, hey, if you had been there, worshiped him. If you would have been there, my brother would have not died. See, Martha, on the other hand, got in his face like you owe me something. You see, Mary was the worshiper. You know, when Jesus saw her weeping, the Jews came with her weeping and groaning, and he was troubled in the spirit. You see, Mary, I mean, he's talking about Mary is the same Mary that took the, the, the alabaster box and broke it upon Jesus' feet and worshiped him. She, that's, that was her, her deal. That was her, she loved Jesus. He said, you know what? I'm not going to blame you for my brother's death. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to give you. But he said, Mary is the same one that took a very costly uh, oil, a spike nerve, because her praise, her worship cost her something, anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of oil. And Jesus said, where have you laid him? Where have you laid the dead? Where have you laid Lazarus at? You know, where have you put him down at? Where have you laid him at? You see, did you, lay, did you lay him down in a, in a crack house? Did you lay him down on, on a drug addicted street? Did, where did you lay him at? You see, he said, um, and they said to him, Lord, come and see. Come see where we laid him at. Come and see exactly where we left him at. Come on. And some of them said, hey, could this man who opened the eyes of the blind, could not have keep this man from dying. See, a lot of people now all of a sudden, hey, Jesus healed the blind man. He healed the lepers. He healed all these guys. And now Lazarus is a friend. He loved Lazarus. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? You know, a lot of us, we, we do that. Hey, God, and, and he, he's a follower of God. He's a friend of God. And yet, hey, the Bible says, look, Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they went through the fiery furnace, but God got them out of the fiery furnace. Daniel. Daniel went into the lion's den, but God got him out of the lion's den. God said, watch, I'm going to fix the dude, the miraculous. I'm, I'm going to get him out of that grave. I'm the only one that can get him out of that grave. I'm the only one that can get him through the fire. I'm the only one that can get him out of the, the lion's den. And yes, and yes, I will. And I watched Jesus say, oh, take away the stone." Now, Martha, the one that got in his face and said, if you would have been there, he would have died. The sister of him who was dead said to him, Lord, at this time, there's a stench. At this, at this time, you know, because he said right here, he has been he's been dead for four days. Four days he did not read his Bible. Four days he did not pray. So there's a stench. You know, there's a stench of alcohol. There's a stench of, of marijuana. There's a stench. And people, when we came out of the world, we had a stench on us. We had the stench of alcohol. We had the stench of marijuana. We had the stench on us. We stunk the high heavens. We didn't come out smelling the roses either. Because Jesus said, right here, for your sins have reached to the heavens, and God has remembered her iniquities. Our sins reached the nostrils of God, and we say we stunk the high heavens. We stunk the high heavens. 
John chapter 11, I mean, uh, 14, 40 through 11, 40 through 42. And Jesus said there to her, did I not say unto you that if you believe that you will see the glory of God? And I, I, I told you, if you just believe, you're going to see the glory of God. You're going to see the miraculous. You're going to see it take place. And say so they, they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. First, he said, Father, I thank you. He started off his praying with thanks. He started off his praying with thanksgiving. I thank God that you heard me. I thank God that you heard my prayer. I thank God that you're going to raise Lazarus. I thank God that you're going to raise my children. I thank God that you're going to raise my lost loved ones from the dead. You see, and I know that you always heard me because of the people who are standing by. I said this, that they, that they may believe that you sent me. See, I know that you heard me. How? The Bible says, I cried with my mouth, with my voice. You know, he made a cry with his voice. You see, and I extol thee, I praise thee with my tongue. You see, and saw so those who, you know, it's for those that believe. The ones that said, man, I can't believe you're going to raise Lazarus from the dead, that alcoholic, that drunk. You know, I can't believe you're going to get this guy up out of that grave. You know, it's for them to believe. And when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. He's still crying, people. Come forth. John, come forth. You come forth. You come out of the world. The Bible says, be separate from the world. Because he said right here. He said, come out from among them and be separate from the world. Do not touch any unclean thing. Do not touch the alcohol. Do not touch the cigarettes. Do not touch any unclean thing. All the filthiness out of the world, and he will receive you. And uh, verses 44, he said right here, He who has died has come out bound, hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. He that was bound. I also look at Legion too. And Legion was bound by his addictions. He was bound by chains. He was bound by depression. He was bound by suicide. And same thing with Lazarus. Lazarus was bound by his addictions. He was bound by alcohol. How many of us are bound by alcohol? How many of us were bound by, by cigarettes? And every other thing that bound us. He said, but when we, once we came to God, once we come out of the world and come out of the grave, and we come and still come in our grave clothes, uh, apostolic Pentecostal, look it up on YouTube. Apostolic Pentecostal or, or UPCI Church. So, you see, he said right here, he said, loose them. Once you get to the altar, God is loosening you from the addiction to alcohol. He's loosening you from the suicidal tendencies. He's loosening you from the depression and let them go. And he said, let them go. Alcohol, you cannot have them. Depression, you cannot have them. Suicidal tendencies, you cannot have them. You see, he said right here, he who the Son has makes, he who the Son makes free is free indeed. God freed you. How? When he filled you with the Holy Ghost. When you get baptized in Jesus' name. Jesus, uh, John 3 and 5, Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say unto you, unless one is born again of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's your freedom. Jesus' name, baptism. And filling of the Holy Ghost. You are free from the bondage of sin. You are free from it. Peter said to them, repent. And let everyone you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You see, the Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You are totally free from every sin, every bondage, everything. So there is freedom. So, and you see right here, in Colossians chapter uh, 2, verses 11 through 14. And in him, in him, you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, but by putting off the body of sin of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him, but in Jesus' name, baptism, and in, in which you are also raised with him through the faith of the working of God, and that's the Holy Ghost, who raised you from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and uncircumcised of your flesh, 
He has made you alive together with him, having forgiven all your trespasses and having wiped away. Now, this is he wiped away. He, he, the blood of Jesus wiped away every sin, every sin that you've ever committed. No matter how horrible it is, it's wiped away. It's cleansed. And it said the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. He has taken is taking that out of the way and nailing it to the cross. Everything. He nailed it to the cross. And I'm about ready to wrap up my, my Bible study. He said, and this is my last scripture. And he who was made, he who is made alive are dead in trespasses and sins. No, it's apostolic Pentecostal. Look it up. Look up UPCI or look up um or look up um apostolic churches. So anybody need any prayer requests, please let me know. I thank you for the likes. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, I'm ready to get off of this. I'll be back later on. I thank you all for joining me.